All right, welcome to Engineering Design in Omniverse. And uh, this week, what we're doing is we're just continuing to work on this Omniverse window that we will be using to run uh, to run supervised learning to train the jet racer inside of Isaac Sim. And <clears throat> right now, so this is our window we'll be using. And basically the way it'll work is this first image will be tied to the viewport. So whatever the viewport displays, this first image will, will display. Actually, all three will. <clears throat> and then if you go click on this image where the car should steer, like where should it go? You'll go ahead and click there, and that will teach the car where to steer. It's, and you, we'll just kind of keep doing images and keep clicking as we go. <clears throat> Excuse me. So there we go. That's what we're doing. And so the, f the first thing we're doing is we've got a little issue where this image is not updating. So for example, if I, right now, if I relaunch this widget, it should be a blank viewport. And let's, let's run this notebook and see what it does. I'll close this window. And if we run this cell that creates that window, it creates the window, but it has an old image. Now, if I relaunch Omniverse completely, it will, it will, oh, excuse me. But if I look on disk where the image is saving, oh, heck, it didn't, oh, I didn't run that part yet. <laughs> Let's try this again. If I go up here to the, to the cell that saves the image, let's double check that that works. Great. We have a blank, black image a blank for a blank viewport. And then I should be able to run this cell to create that window. And where is Omniverse? And you see it creates the window, but the image is an old image. Let's run it again just to be sure. I've got a quick hunch. I wonder if this is like an ID in the dictionary. So I turn it again. Made a second window. No, that's just the header. That's just the header. Jet Racer 2. Yeah, so something's going on here. And it is it's recreating the window, but it's not um, redoing the image correctly. Um, yeah. I think let's... Let's try this. We have the de define on mouse release here, right? And when we click on this image, it's uh, it's doing stuff, right? Let's try. I, I don't have to. I don't really care if the image loads every time we. Um, I don't care if the image loads every time correctly when we first launch. I mean, this is just kind of a get it to work level of extension. So I'm thinking, what if we reassign that source whenever you click and just see if that will update the image? What do you think? Oh, you're muted, Jen. I like being muted. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, you could try. Um, this is kind of just interesting because we've been building widgets in... Um, or Omni UI in, in Jupyter Notebooks. So um, <laughs> it, it might it might have different uh, behaviors, which I'm kind of interested in, in figuring out. So I'm all for um, yeah doing do, trying to do some of that. Just make sure that you already have a default source. <laughs> and Zia says might be a cache overwrite issue. Yep, absolutely. It could be that we need to write a function in. You know, when you click on the X, it's just closing the window. It's not actually um, disposing of the widget. So who knows what yeah. they're do actually doing. But I think for us, let's just start here. So we have the source here. We have this canvas frame, with has which has this UI image inside of it, right? 
Hmm. I can say maybe with we're going to want this source to be I guess it doesn't matter does it hmm. that might give you a very interesting result yeah it's, it's flashing. I think it's actually doing it, but. Let's try what Zia said. He said. Um, oh, so maybe. Uh, well, but the image itself is being overwritten. If I come over here to fancy that PNG, there it is. It's overwritten. But just out of curiosity, let's try this. Now there's another one in there, fancy too. And let's what happened? Well, that worked. Changing changing the name of the image worked. <laughs> so this is what I'm going to do, which is a little bit hacky. Well, let's see here. Trash that cell. Actually, we're just going to do this. This could be anywhere, right? Call in. Thanks. And then to return, I don't even know how to return something. I want to return a string, which is the source. Uh, so you don't need to put anything, but if you want to define it in the function, you could do an arrow and then uh, str. Yeah. And then I'll just say capture image. Equals Is that how you do it? Or do you say return path? Uh well you're gonna need to save the path somewhere because that's what you're gonna want to return, right? Is the path. Yeah. So <clears throat> we're gonna say um to give us some flexibility later right that yeah how's that look Looks good to me. Okay. Give it a try. Now I'm going to create a capsule. Right again. Yeah, so it's not updating now. 
But if I do this, still didn't count. It <laughs> didn't work. Huh. Oh, did you try clicking on it? Is that is that is that what you were trying to do? You click and then it should update. No, I just changed the name. Oh. So now it's supposed to be loading fancy two. And it's not loading fancy two, it's loading fancy. And fancy two has objects in it. Yeah. Boom. Okay. That's a capsule right there. Fancy it does as well, as a matter of fact. Mm. Oh, this is interesting. Theory is that now Fancy 2 is locked, so you would need Fancy 3 as a clean plate. Okay. Yeah, let's try that. Yeah. Okay. So once you use a source, it kind of gets locked. Do you know how to generate a GUID in Python? Uh, uh, a what? A GUID. A GUID. Yeah. Like a GUI? No, a GUID, a global unique identifier. Uh. So you can use a um, UUID. There we go. Yeah, U UUID library. Import UUID. And then we can say, um, Here we go. We want that line. Why didn't that work? It's not showing up as if it's part of a string. Maybe this is the highlighting. So if we're going to say click. So whenever you click, instead of doing this, now we want to do, um, here you go. Whenever you click, it's going to capture a new image. All right. Oh. Okay, it's this is a string literal, even though I closed it with quotes. So I think you have to add it after. Add it after? Oh, yeah, like on a separate line. What the heck? What am uh, I doing it might also just be the fact that that's the escape character and it's reading as, as escape that. So you, Oh yeah. All right. Path so plus. if you want to add, yeah, you do plus and then, yeah, yeah. Okay. Only concatenate. Oh, all right. Oh dear. Failed to read file. It's got dashes in it. Yeah. We want dot hex. Oh, you're, that's actually already a string. 
I'm looking at my side here. I got this Stack Overflow post on on generating goods, and we're we're going to do this um, hexadecimal string so it doesn't have dashes, and see if that works. Where are we? <clears throat> Um, I'm lost right here. All right, let's try that. Oh, it says right here. Oh, we got to have that PNG on the end of it. Right here. <laughs> like a, you get a whole bunch of ping images well, here. What's the path that, that it's spitting out? Oh, that's a good point. Let's double check that. So I, I just rerun it and see. So a path is equal to that. Okay. Omniverse launcher. So you want to do local programs on this launcher. EAE.png. Right here. And it's a valid image with a capsule in it. So I must have made a mistake in my path. I would see if you could try making it smaller. Okay. Let's see Python the base sixty four UID. This will make it shorter. Yeah, I got a feeling that by the time that it's done loading the image, your widgets are trying to create themselves. Oh, I see. Well, way to check that. It's hacky. Oh, you think there's a race condition going on? Mm hmm. Okay, let's just do uh just do a thread sleep just to see if that's true. Yeah, it's totally race condition. All right. But let's see if... Uh... Oh, hello. Now let's, let's like change the view here. Okay. Yeah, that's working now, kind of. So, okay, what happened that last time that didn't work? Too fast. Too fast, man. Let's go to our folder. <laughs> Full of images.
Yeah. It's hacky. It's hacky, but it's nice. And it still is race condition because apparently uh, a tenth of a second isn't always long enough. So let's just uh, bump that up. This is not a best practice. We're just prototyping here. You'll hear me see that kind of thing a lot, I think. But um, it's because it's true. Yeah. It's working now. Oh, what the heck? Doesn't always work. Just usually works. Mm. Oh, great question. So what is a race condition? A race condition is if you have a code that's doing things asynchronously, and it's let's say it's going to do two things in it, the code branches and does two things at once. And if your code behaves differently, if the first thing finishes first versus the second thing finishes first, then you have a race condition. And they're nasty bugs. Because you need to basically make sure that, like in this case, we're saying, okay, write the image and create the widget. And depending on how long it takes to write that image to disk, sometimes the widget's created before the image is on disk. And if that happens, the image won't load. And if we click enough times, it'll happen. There we go. It happened. The image wasn't saved to disk by the time Omniverse was trying to create the image widget, and so it failed. I yeah, it's kind of, I guess chicken it's kind and of egg. Thinking. Yeah. Okay, that's a good way to think of it. Yeah, because what, so, what's happening is that there's, uh, when it's capturing the image, sometimes um, it might hang up your, uh, it might hang up Omniverse. So in order to avoid that, we put it in its own separate thread. And then that's going off and doing its own job while it's still creating all of the UI at the same time. And so if, and then this is where the race comes in, right? Where if the image isn't made quick enough, then the, <laughs> the UI is going to be like, it's going to bork, you know? And if it's an async... Um... There you go. Catch your viewport to file right here. It probably um, calls an async function uh, within uh, the function. Yeah, and I'm not seeing not seeing a callback or anything. So this is something that we'll have to do a report back and report as a bug, I think. Because it should either run synchronously, right, and just not be done until the image is saved, or it should give us, or it should be an async function that lets us wait for it to finish, right? Well, there's probably an async function within it that's being called internally. Let's see. I just Let's don't try. know what. <sighs> You could probably open up the extension to take a look to find that original. I don't, want to dig, I don't want to dig deep too deep into that, but I think I would try. Oh wait, uh, that's going to take a while, but that's okay. If we do import async IO, import async IO, um, we can say we can make this async. Right, and then in theory, we can say, wait, if it's an async function, it might, it probably isn't. I'm just taking a stab, being kind of, I'm um, hopeful. Um. 
Let's see who we at. Oh, um, when there is a change on stage, that triggers a read from the disc. Uh, um, more right now, it's when you click. Let me show you on the code. So we have this. We've made this. We have this canvas frame that lets you listen to mouse events. And inside that mouse, inside that canvas frame is the image. So we've got a canvas frame that's this size. And inside of that canvas, we're putting the image. But then we're also, right here, we're listening to the set mouse release function on the canvas. And um, so right here, and that's going to call this define on mouse release. So whenever you click on that image, it's taking a snapshot and then putting the image up right there. Great question, Papa Chuck. If you are just snapshotting images to train the model at different locations, why not just use Replicator? Um, the reason is, and maybe it is possible, and we should ask, but I don't think it is. It requires some user interaction. The We're doing... Um, supervised learning right now and so the user has to click on the image where the the where that car should steer to and to my knowledge replicator does not let let it pause and gather um, a user input is that right as far as you know jen well i mean they're using the same functionality right to capture their images yeah so the yeah, have... we're, we're basically using the same thing replicator uses well, but, but Replicator doesn't pause. Like to train the AI and to tell it where the car should go, Replicator doesn't pause and let you click, does it? No. So the point of Replicator, right, is to create massive amounts of data uh -huh. without having to do all of the uh, supervised learning work that we would have to be doing, right? Which is kind of like where we have to hand annotate data. Replicator yeah. is like here's a set of conditions. Okay, now run. And I can go and have lunch with my buddies or, you yeah. know, and then I there can come go. back and be like, oh, like, cool, sweet. I got like 1 million images that they can train off of. So it's just like a, a quicker way to generate all of your synthetic data. Uh, where in this case, we actually have to hand create our own um, Trainer. semantic annotations and, and, and stuff on the images. So it would be nice. It would be nice. You know, that could be a feature request, Papa Chuck. You can go in and you could be like, you know, it'd be nice if we could. Pause and give some user interaction. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. <laughs> well, and when we get into reinforcement learning, then, then it can all be automated because we'll mm -hmm. have to set up rules for how the car performs that say, how well did this do? Did it, If it goes out of bounds, fail. If it makes it around the track, great. But the faster it makes it around the track, even better. Something like that. And uh, so that'll be really, then it'll be all done with Replicator. Mm -hmm. um, so I think async IO is only good for IO tasks, not CPU intensive tasks. I just thought, it, I mean, maybe I could be wrong, but I thought async IO was good for any multi-threaded task. Anytime you have an async task, but so, maybe is there another async library for? So the reason we use async is if you actually go into the back end of Omniverse, you'll notice that a lot of the times most of the um, thread calls are being done through async IO. Oh, line forty-one. You can go to view, show line numbers. Where's line forty-one? Okay. Wait, what? Oh, interesting. Oh, I've got it. Oh, wait. It's, it's actually um, now what's going on with this image is I'm passing in source. But because um, capture image is a async function, it's actually returning the delegate. That's what happens. Yeah. So. So what you have to do is you actually have to say um, source equals await capture yep. image there. And then if you don't await an async function, 
it will actually just give you the async function, not the return value from the async function. So you can totally do that. It just doesn't, it's maybe, maybe not doing what you, what you expect. I was afraid of this. Um, yeah, because you're that's not a function. So so now we want to make a new function. Async def create window. Right? Just do this for now. Maybe we will be able to do this. I don't know. Okay, so now it's in an async function that's not running. Wait. No. Try that. Okay, so now I can't do this. Can I just run? Is there like a dot run? Uh, you would need to do async io dot create task. Oh, wait, what? Oh, I see. Async io dot create task. I wonder if you have to get the the loop first, though. Well, and let's just try this first. See, I've got an await outside of an async function, it says. But um, async dev create window. Oh, yeah, you do right there on the uh, mouse released. Uh, oh. Can I call an async function from a... Uh, you could. I feel like you're getting to the point where it might just be way too, way too inter interconnected. Maybe a little off topic for this live stream, huh? Yeah. Let's see if we're getting feedback. So we'll just sleep for now. Just to uh, keep on tra on track, and I might work on this async code a little bit. Um, offline. So we're just going to increase this sleep to half a second, OK? Give that disk all the time it needs. Don't need these awaits for now. And please, please, please. The calling sleeps is um, total hack. Um, I'm gonna. It's gonna drive me nuts already. It's hard for me to move on. Leaving that in there, but for the sake of the live stream, I'm gonna do it. All right. And I mean, you're not going to be clicking that often for this, because when I was doing it in the Jupiter Lab, right? Like I would have to like move the car a little bit, click, then move the car, then click. So it's not perfect, but it, it's still usable, right? You're not going to spam click. Yeah, I'm getting some. Oh, here it is. It's still not always making it back. So I'm just going to take it back to 0 0.1 seconds so at least it goes quick. And I'll look into that. Um, a little bit better solution than this. <clears throat> but now we can. All right, cool. Now let's take a look at this. <coughs> I probably want to update all of the images, not just the one. Um, I 
All right. Do we want to say um, other canvas two equals? With canvas two, canvas three equals with canvas three. Then up here in the mouse click, we can say um, with canvas to UI dot image source with canvas three UI dot image source. And now they should all update. Let's find out. Yeah. Cool. And really, uh, what I kind of want to do is, is there like a right-click event that we can do? Uh, so on your mouse released one? Oh, there are arguments, aren't there? Yeah. So you can... Um, button. Yeah. So you can okay. print out which buttons uh, are what. Because uh, if, if you have a, um, a normal mouse, which has a left button, a right button, and a middle mouse wheel, it'll account for all three buttons. Yeah, so I did. Oh dear. So that it prints out the button. I think that's zero. That's so middle click is two, right click is one. So there's mm -hmm. an integer. There's just, just an enum. It looks like. So what we can do here is we'll say I think we just want to center click. So we'll just say if um. I just say if um, button equals zero, then we're going to. Um, well, actually, I want to go back a bit. Here we go. If button, oh gosh, I dot, too many years of dot net. Else if that one word in dot else if or is it L if L if button equals two that's the center click and it'll capture the image and replace it. Oh, well, we got to keep going here. There we go. No, I was wrong. This is part of the of the other strong function. Okay. So now, oh come on, what's your problem now? We got something wrong with our print right here. What's it saying? End of line while scanning literal. Oh, I didn't have my close quotes there. Yep. All right, we've run it. What's the problem now? Huh? Oh, I haven't done the image yet. So if I center click, there we go. So if I center click, it does an image sometimes. Huh? If I just click, it prints the coordinates that I've clicked. Cool. If I left click. So center click does the image. Left click does the... Um, oh, dear. I think the next thing we should do is delete the previous image. Right? 
So I've got on capture image, I've got path, right? Is that going to still be kicking around the next time I call this function in what? Python? What's that? Well, it will be kicking around. Will path still be there? Uh, so, so when I call this, what I'd like to do, let's see, I've got um, delete previous image. So mm, but why would you want to delete the previous image? Because they just get um, they just, they just get stacked up in here. Every mm. time I click, it saves a new image. You just wouldn't worry about it? Well, because I'm wondering for the learning part of it, don't you want to keep... It makes a copy of the image and puts it into a data set, right? So... Maybe hold on to it, huh? Okay, that's a good point. Maybe let's let's see where we're at here. Let's let's carry on to the next step, which is well, we're getting okay. So we're getting some data here, right? Mm -hmm. So every time we click, we get the x y coordinates. Let's see how those. Let's start reading through uh, this code and see kind of what's. What's going on? Let's in the previous version. All right. <clears throat> we wanted this active data set. Data set equals data sets, data sets zero, data sets A and B. Oh, here we go. So now our data sets exists. All right. Unobserve all callbacks from the camera. We're not working with the camera in this one. Create image preview. This all sets up the widgets that displays the image. We got the camera widget, the and the snapshot widget. I don't think we need any of that. All right. Oh, just a second here. So we are recording the mouse coordinates for each click. Not completely sure yet. It actually might be more of like an angle. So it might be if you click on the center, it knows that it should go straight. If you click to the left, it knows you should go left, right? And so it might be um, based on the height is kind of how far away we've clicked. And based on how far left, we can probably figure out an angle and figure out a steering angle based on where you click. Um, and so basically, given an image, we're going to say you should steer at this angle. Um, so the images are the input. Um, yeah, so so basically like for a given image, so we're, we're going to give the, the AI as an input an image. It's going to feed out an angle and a throttle value between 0 and 1, we, or between negative 1 and 1, right? Um, so... And what we're basically what we're doing is we are hand picking. I don't know about how it's going to know the throttle. We, we might just have a set throttle that goes. I, we'll see here how Chitoku's done it. We're, um, yeah, we're, 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 we're seeing that right here. And, um, but yeah, basically, essentially you click on it and it gives you, it'll figure out the angle it should drive at. And we're, we're training it. We're going to put the car in lots of random positions on the track and say, this is where you should steer. And um, negative one, yeah, I, I think we could allow backing up. And it, uh, I'm not sure if we'll train for that or not. So 
uh, still, I'm kind of reading through this as, as we go. Um, yeah, we're kind of figuring this out ourselves. Yeah, absolutely. Great question with the throttle. I, I mean, we're digging into this. Um, if you look at the videos, if you go to Jet Racer and you look at his go, if you look at Chitoku's go, where is that video? Here it is. His actually turns around. And it, it's just a quick video here, but it looks, that one's constant throttle. It looks like pretty constant throttle on this one. Wait, but it backed up and changed directions, didn't it? I, so no, not constant <laughs> throttle. That that might be um, we'll see. W when he was, you know. He turned it around. Pretty, yeah. Yeah, that could be. Or it could even be that he was driving it there, and that's why it looks so great. Mm -hmm. We'll find out. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Here's the data set widget. It should let you pick a data set. And a category which widget lets you pick a category, but right now it's only the one category. So I'm not sure what those do. And there's a count widget that displays an integer. Okay, count widget dot value equals dataset dot get count category widget dot value. So I'm really interested in when he starts training stuff, right? Set the active data set. Global data set, data set equals data sets change new. Update counts when we select a new category. I'm really interested in when he clicks. I'm okay if we just have one data set and one category and we just train the thing, right? They did it a little more advanced, so it looks like you could have more than one model stored in there. Um, yeah, oh, um, some comments about resetting it. Yeah, if you have to reset the car by hand every time, that's that would be that would take a while. And actually, the way that this car is set up, there's um, you can control it with the remote or with you can oh, the Orin will control it unless you send a command with the remote or you hit a button and it switches over to remote control so then you control it so you can switch back and forth so if it's headed off the track or going too fast you can shut it down <clears throat> excuse me okay save snapshot if content event equals click so when you click X, okay, it's going to save the X and Y coordinates. And it's going to save it to this data set. And then it's going to update the snapshot. Um, so I'm not... Oh, this is an interesting question. What if we want to replay the data set in SIM to make changes? Yeah, that's a good point. In, in that situation, you would want to um, save the data set, wouldn't you? And I think with that in mind, let's make a little data structure that for every image, it stores like where we clicked and it stores the path to the image. So we want to store the X and the Y and the um, and the image path, right? In, into a little data structure. Should we see if we can, should we do that next? And. Can you do it in 10 minutes? Oh yeah, please. Let's say define, uh, can you do structs in Python or just classes? 
you you could do classes or but start but it, it's it's whatever you want to do oh i don't know just in, in dot net if you had a oh you can uh, let's do a class it's just up here we're going to say um class data point x int y int f string I, my syntax is terrible folks don't judge me is that right how does that look for a data point class I'm looking at some documentation class class name yeah that looks right doesn't it all righty so here we have a now we have a class data point let's run that one so it exists and then um we want data set to just be a just a collection of data points. How um, I'm just googling stuff on the side. Like um, I just googled a Python list of objects, and that's it. Is that just, that's just an array, I guess, or it's a list. Mm hmm. So then whenever you click, let me see here. That's doing the images, right? Bop, bop, bop. I'm actually going to do this. Just to help with our race condition. This is a terrible coding, folks. But that's just going to give us that much more time for it to save the disk. Um, I really do want to look into how to do this right. Oh, I don't actually we don't always capture the image, so never mind. Oh, I pulled it from the wrong place. All right. So on the mouse click, if it's a left click, we're going to grab the X and the Y, and we're going to say uh, data set dot add. Um, either point x, y, um, source. Um, do we need to add a constructor to data set to be able to call it this way? Ben? Yeah. So we're going to make like a bunch for init. Nope. You got a, a DEF. You got to define it. And then it's two underscores around it. Okay. So we'll say DEF underscore init underscore. Oh, you, got, you got one more underscore between two underscores on each side. Oh. Um, X, Y, path. So? Yeah. And then you don't need the bottom one, son. I don't even need to do all that's right. I don't, do I? Yeah. Like so. And then you want a self in the front of this. Yeah. There you go. All right. <clears throat> okay. So we've got a nice little struct for storing each of our clicks. And 
Papa Checks makes it. Um, you need a tensor to train the model, so you need a data frame to be compatible. Yeah, and I don't know what I don't know what how we're feeding data into the um, into the model yet to train. Well, that's later down in the Jupyter notebook that I have, we haven't read yet. But I I know we're at some point we're going to need those those clicks and that image. That's all we got. So that's what well, we'll be able to figure out what we need from that information for sure. And we need a self. Um, I don't know for sure if we need a self right here or not, but I think it does add clarity. So I'm going to leave it. Um, great. And so now whenever we click print data set. List object has no attribute add. Okay, that's my .NET background. We have this list uh, called data set, and I've called dot .add with a lowercase. I'm gonna just gonna Google Python add object to list, and um, we want to use dot .append, which adds it to the end. That again. Local variable source reference before assignment. Oh dear. Let's see. Oh, I probably have to, um, in this case, make sure I do a, a center click first. No, it doesn't like it. So basically what's going on here is I'm trying to add this source to the um, my dictionary, but it hasn't been assigned. And so I've got the source variable here, but it does not persist until the next time this is called. I suppose that makes sense. Well, but what's saying it doesn't exist? Is data set the thing that doesn't exist, or is it source that doesn't exist? Source does not exist. Are you sure? Um, pretty sure. Local variable source referenced before assignment. Before assignment. Even you though didn't I... put source, though. Yeah, I did right here. Well, but like, where is it elsewhere? Right here. So source is equal to the capture image. Well, but in the if you look in the stack of how the code's written, you're mm -hmm. trying to use source before you even state that there is a source variable. Does that it make sense? Uh, yeah, but I, I use it here. It's, it's used, but maybe this is, these are just local scope. So maybe these are in these other scopes and they're gone by the time I call it here. Uh-huh. Okay, so what I want to do then is uh, let's say um, can I do that. Will that make it higher scope? You could. Yeah, but should I? That's the we'll question. find out. No. I would recommend setting source uh, equal to something in the function itself at the top. Right. So before your two ifs, your if and elif, you would just say source is equal to, um, but you would write it inside the function. Oh, because it's a whole different scope? Yeah. Okay, let me think about this. Can you think about it in negative 25 seconds? Hey, 20 seconds. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there we go. 
It's a different error. Data point takes no arguments. I think I maybe didn't run that. Yeah. Huzzah. We're doing it. All right, cool. So now whenever you click, we're saving the data points. And uh, next week we'll continue down the path of, of using those data points to actually train it. And I've, I've lost my StreamYard tab, so I'm trying to find the StreamYard tab so I can end the live stream. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing too many, going too quick. Let's see here. One of these has got it. There we go. Found it. I'm back. All right. No pressure. And we're just going to keep going down this path of how to train this car to drive itself in Omniverse, which is so cool because it's free. You can just train a car, right? Kind of fun. Until next week, um, have fun. And we'll see you all on Discord. And join us on the Jet Racer channel if you want to keep chatting about this project. Have a good one.